Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back again with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Uh, Honeybee just had a release, it's called Adventure Awaits, and these products are from that new release. So I'm using the Fishing Net Stencil, and then this is, oh, what is the name of the sentiment set? Your, your Keeper? Is that what it is? Be still, my apologies. And then I'm also using the new Lovely Layers uh, Water Lily. So here, this is what I'm doing. Um, I'm just laying out all of my pieces, parts. I try to keep the flowers, like parts that go together as much as I possibly can. Uh, it gets a little bit more challenging with like the large um, water lily because the pieces are just so big. But I wanted to talk to you about the way that I'm taping them. So I am taping them so that as many of those dies are connected by the tape as possible. And the reason that I'm doing that is because it makes it so much easier to cut multiples. So even though I only used one large water lily and one small water lily for this, I actually cut a bunch of them out of white cardstock so that I can just keep them with my set because I already have everything laid out and I know I'm not typically, the way that I like to use die cuts, I'm not typically going to cut them out of colored cardstock. I'm going to color them myself. So coloring them out of white um, or cutting them out of white is what makes the most sense for me. So just a quick tip on that. If you're trying to cut multiples while you have everything out at one time, um, try taping them together. So then you just can pick them up as one piece, move them to a new piece of cardstock, run them through and cut them. Okay, now on to the next. This... I don't know if this was successful. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not 100% sure. I don't mind the way it looks, um, but do I know if it came out the way I intended? Meh, I don't know. You be the judge. I think that it's important for you, for me, for any of us who are creators of any whatever medium is our choice to kind of try things out and see what works and what doesn't because that's how we discover what we like what does work, what our own style is, um, how to learn lessons to overcome things. And so my idea was when I saw the fishing net stencil, I think it's super cute. Um, but I was like, maybe I could turn that into kind of like a guide for water. It's very choppy water. <laughs> The, 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 the motion of the water is hectic, but it, it, honestly, I think it ended up looking like bubble wrap, but whatever. I, I mean, it gives the illusion of water, which is really all that I needed for the background of my card. And so that's why I still continued on with my design. But I, I like to share with you everything that I try, whether it's a success or a not so success. So this, it has nothing to do with the stencil. The stencil's fantastic. Um, and it's drawn with such great movement. Um, so I just did a little bit of ink blending in the background. I just did one layer and I'm doing it with the darkest part in the center and then as it gets lighter out towards the edges because originally my game plan was to put my flower in the center. It ended up being kind of like down into the right, but it, it's okay. Um, but so anywho, that's what you see me doing here and I am just then going in and doing my second layer now with the stencil. So because honeybee stencils are clear, which I tell you I love, because then you can see exactly how it is looking before you have to remove the stencil, like you already know what it's going to look like. So this is what, what we are going to look like. Side note here, this color combination I love, but if you want your waters to be less green and more blue, swap out the peacock feathers for mermaid lagoon, uh, and it will be more on the blue side. But I liked the green. I thought the teal was kind of fun. Um... But anywho, so I'm going to work out to Salty Ocean, which is my lightest color and also clearly needs to be re-inked. But anyway, so then once that is done, um, instead of just leaving it like this, I am going to go in with my Copic markers and add some more shading. I just have three colors here. These are all in the BG family. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to kind of follow the shapes that are already there. So for the darkest part in the center, you can't really see it, which is fine. Um, but here, because I'm scared, that's why I'm using my lightest color when I first start, because I'm a little bit frightened of how it's going to look out. And <laughs> so what I did was I just went in, once I got comfortable with my darkest color, and I went to the bottom of each one of these kind of triangle shapes, and I just added some color. I didn't pay any attention to where the stencil kind of 
started or began the shape, um, I filled in just, I just went along with the edge of the shape. There is no, there is no need with this for it to be perfect, for you to, to color in each and every one of these shapes perfectly, because we're just giving kind of the illusion of water. I think maybe if I retry this, I won't follow each individual netted piece. I'll kind of maybe do two together so that my water wouldn't be as choppy and my sections of water would be bigger. Um, but ultimately, I do think that it was it's a really good exercise just to get an idea of how water like would to shade it for movement, how you would have kind of those peaks and valleys, which is why the net made me think of water, because it has the same thing, kind of those peaks and valleys that you would see in water. Um, and we're going to do a couple of other things to it as well. So you you tell me what you think of this technique. I will be very interested um, to hear. I truly do think it ends up looking like bubble wrap. If you, <laughs> if you have a kid's birthday card who really likes bubble wrap, do this. It'll work. <laughs> um, but I think it's fun. It's a fun way just to create some texture in the background. And you guys know, I tell you all the time that it's important, especially when you have a card that maybe is a little bit simpler design wise, that you want to have things that, that bring in dimension or bring in, in texture. And this background fits the bill. Uh, so while it may not be exactly what I had envisioned, um, it's good enough. Uh, what does Gina say? It's better than horrible. <laughs> it's better than horrible. And so we went with it um, anyway. The only other thing that I'm going to do with this background is um, I had a little bit of trouble blending out that darker part in the center. And so you'll see me go in with the darkest marker. And I'm still kind of following along those same kind of lines. Um, but once I get the darkest portion down, then I'm going to go in and just kind of blend them out along the lines um, as it gets a little bit lighter. And this was a much better blending situation to get that dark center out. So now everything is filled in here. I'm going to go in and I'm kind of going to create um, like the little white highlights that you would see on the peaks. I think maybe I went a little overboard with the peaks, honestly. It's hard to... <laughs> It's hard to self-regulate um, sometimes. Like sometimes you're like, oof, overworked it. I did. I overworked it. Um, but that's okay. So I just went in with a white gel pen. This is a number 10. And I did all of that. And then the last thing that I'm going to do to the background is I'm going to add some glitter because I like shimmer. And water's glittery, honestly. So it makes sense. Um, even if it didn't, I would add the glitter because it's my card and I do what I want. Um, so... Here, I'm just going in. I'm not doing solid lines. I'm letting it skip, uh, just like I did with the gel pen. And I'm just adding kind of little uh, little bits of glitter, and you'll be able to see it here, kind of catch the light. And then I'm going to set it aside to dry while we work on our coloring. So I have cut everything out. This is how I like to color uh, my die cuts, um, especially with Honeybee's Lovely Layers. They, um, they just, they work they're, they're so well done. I'm not gonna, I mean, there's no, there's no better way to say it. They're, they're just so well done. And so I like to lay one die cut on top of the other, like whatever the next layer is. And then I outline it with my lightest color so I can see where my shading needs to go. Then I get in there and get coloring. Did I lose my mind here? Absolutely. Yes, I did. It had been a while since I had done one of these lovely layers colorings. And so I just, because I'm a completist, Okay, that's a, that's a thing. Like when you're a person who can't leave something undone. Uh, and so I like to see that all colored. I don't like to see the white space. And so that is what I started doing. That is completely unnecessary. <laughs> Please stay tuned for how to do it and not waste a bunch of ink. Um, so I do like to go in and outline the edges of the parts that even that aren't going to be colored just so as they stack up on themselves and you look at the design from the side, it's not just a bunch of white edges. Um, but you don't need to fill in the entirety of the piece, even though that's what I started doing. So let's just kind of, you know, use this first piece as a learning curve because that's what it was. And then I put the die cut back in place to make sure I got everything colored and the shading is correct. And then I will move on to the next one, so on and, and so forth. Um, 
this this die is pretty fun, guys. I'm not gonna lie. Because when you pair it with the lily pad, it definitely looks like a lily. Uh, uh obviously, a water lily. Uh, that's what it's meant to be, Kelly. Um, but if you took that off and you paired it with something from, like, the, um, spring greenery, you could make it look like a completely different flower. You could use it in a completely different application. And I am all for stretching my products. Um, so speaking of products, let's just talk some more about products while we watch me color this. Uh, doing, doing it the proper, doing it the proper way. Now you can see me properly coloring. Is there a proper way? No, I don't think that that is accurate. That's just the way that I normally do it. This is the way I normally do it. Um, so this release, because... Um, of the time of year that it is, but also because I see people asking for it all the time, that they want more masculine pieces, more way to do um, dad's Father's Day, birthday cards, um, you know, things like that. This release is so good. It's 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 just, there's so many things. So they have some motorcycles, they have some fishing, they have these cute little summer cabins and some lake scenes. They have pine stencils, um, they have 3D embossing folders. Like, it's just... So typically, because I'm on the Honeybee team, you know, I would tell them what I want. Like, I will look at the product beforehand and I'm like, okay, these are the things that I want to work with. Because um, Honeybee is the cat's pajamas like that. And literally when I saw this, I was like, just, just send me everything, please, please. And thank you. Okay. Uh, I don't even have anybody in my family who fishes. <laughs> I don't, but am I going to use that stamp set? Yes, I am because it's brilliant. They also have like a little gift box that goes with it that, um, that fits like you can make your own little like tackle box kind of thing. Oh, it's so great. I just, so if you have, Dawn actually told me because her husband's a big fisherman. She was like, just make Jason a birthday card and send it to him. I'm not going to send it to him. Maybe I'll send him a picture. Um, but yeah, I, I'm going to use it anyway because it's so good. It's so good. So I'm super excited to do, to use the release for some of my own Father's Day cards, not the fishing ones, of course. Um, but some of the other things. So if you have not seen that release, uh, it will be linked below. I highly recommend going and checking it out because it's excellent. Um, and normally I don't give a whole lot of like pomp and circumstance to releases because I think, you know, sometimes you're into something and sometimes you're not. But this one, because maybe it's been so long since I've seen a really good release that's like so specifically tailored to... Um, Th and like, and then they have like the shields. A anyway, I'm getting sidetracked, but I, I just think it's it's really good. And if you haven't seen it, you should. There, there's that. There's a lot of lake things too, which is great because Eric's family is lake people. Um, so that's going to be real easy to like for my father day or for my father in law for his birthday and for Father's Day. I'm I'm laking it up, folks. Expect to see those cards shortly. <laughs> um, but so anywho, to yesterday, um. We talked about how crazy it was um, and just nothing was working out for me. So thankfully, thanks, thanks to my husband, I managed to make it through the day and still get my things accomplished. Um, today, this is something I don't know that I've shared. Um, about a month ago, Peanut came to me and said, Mom, will you join the PTO? Now, I don't know. I don't think that it is right or fair that... Uh, PTO moms maybe have a, um, a stereotype. Um, but I was like, oof, I don't know that I'm a PTO kind of mom. Like, I don't know if that's, that's my jam, but, uh, my son very rarely comes to me and asks me something so specific. And realistically, part of the reason why I wanted to own my own business and work from home was so that I would have the opportunity to spend more time with my children. So I was like, yes. So I reached out to the PTO um, lady who was very nice. And she said, um, you know, it's kind of late in the year to join the PTO, but um, as long as you have a background check, you can volunteer. So that is what I did. Uh, I volunteered and there was only two opportunities to volunteer left in the year. Um, one of them was doing the glow cart and the other one was doing field day. And so the glow cart, if you, I'm so glad you asked, is basically they have a glow dance party and they get points in their class for like good behavior. 
And so they could use those points to then purchase glow sunglasses, earrings, necklaces, bracelets. Um, what else did they have on there? Um, was that it? No, they had a lot of, they had a couple of different kinds of styles of sunglasses, but anyway, so they needed, um, volunteers to push the glow cart from room to room. So these kids could purchase their items. Uh, so I volunteered for that. And then the other one was field day. I don't, is that a thing in all places? I don't know. I always had field day when I was a kid. So basically it's just like one of the last days of school. It's all outdoor activity, free for all, um, Oh, let's talk about what I'm doing here. So here, you're going to see none of them. <laughs> I'm not perfect, guys. I'm not. I make mistakes. So um, because of where I was zoomed in at, I needed to pull these little tiny pieces closer to me, which means you basically get to see none of the coloring for the centers. But I left it in here anyway, first of all, so you know that I'm not perfect. And second of all, um, so because I do push them up periodically <laughs> into the screen so that you can see, um, basically these two pieces are going to fit in and be the center of the flower. So one of them I added all three colors to and one of them I added just two of the colors to as it's going to stack on top um and these just fit right up like butted up against uh this second layer also just to note I know I've told you guys this before but um Honeybee has all of their layering guides on their website that you can just go in download and print so for any of the lovely layers um that you might be working with that might be something worth doing, or you can just bring them up on the computer screen if you work next to a computer. Um, but anywho, let's talk about this lily pad. So this lily pad, here's how I am shading this. I am going in and I am adding triangles. You can see them, long skinny triangles, all of them pointing toward the center, and I am adding them anywhere the die is kind of cut in. And then I'm going to add a little bit of shading to the center as well. Um, this part you actually will not be able to see. My flower will be sitting on top of it. But I told you I'm a completist. I can't leave it alone. Also, I think it's super important. Maybe you want a lily pad that you can see. Maybe you want some empty lily pads on your card. And so you want to know how to color the whole thing. And since you're here to learn from me and it's my job to teach you, I cannot leave it undone. I just can't. So... Now, once I've added in all my little triangles where all the, the places that the dye is indented, um, then I'm going to work out to my lightest color. And you would be surprised how much dimension you can get just from adding these little triangles and then blending them out to the lightest color. Really easy technique to get lots of movement. Um, so give it, give it a try. Give the triangles a try. In your leaves, in your clothing, in your flowers, um, do, do the triangles. Do them. Do it. You're going to be happy with the results. Um, so anyway, so I also volunteered for field day. Is that where I left off? And um, they, it's like, they, I was in charge of the potato sack race. Um, so they do that and then they had like splash volleyball. Um, basically it's just where the kids throw, <laughs> throw so soaking wet sponges over the volleyball net at each other. And, and I don't know if you, you have to try to catch it. You have to try to not get hit by it. I don't know what the rules were. I wasn't the mom in charge of that. Um, and then they had like ring toss. They had, um, what else? Uh, kickball. They had a game of kickball going on. Let's talk about what I'm doing here. So for the smaller lily pad, the lily pad that goes with the bud or the little extra leaves, if you will, um, these are the side pieces that help give it more dimension. Um, and so I just colored them with one of my lighter colors. I kind of chased them around a bit. I did. Um, and then I'm going to do the leaves, this smaller little lily pad for, um, the same way that I did the flowers. And now here I am just using, this is my little crystal katana. It's a gem picker upper, but I'm using that to place the smaller pieces of the lily pad, just the little edge there. Um, 
And these are also embossed, just FYI. So if you were like, Kelly, I don't want to mess with those little pieces, because y'all know how I feel about little pieces. That's, I mean, it's not a government secret here on my channel that I don't like the little pieces. Um, but if you didn't even want to mess with them, I don't even think it would, I, I don't think anybody would be any the wiser, honestly, because most of the time people who are recipients of your card are not card makers and they won't notice that you didn't put it on. Here, I kind of lost my mind again. There was a lot of that in this video, honestly. So here I was like in the, I was in the habit of using my little crystal katana. And then at some point I realized that these pieces were actually big enough for me to, you know, just do with my hands. And so I, so, so I ditched the, the crystal katana and just went back to putting them together. Now the little bud has four layers, um, that came together really, I mean, honestly, the, the lovely layers typically do come together really easily, even though the pieces parts kind of look funny. Um, for one of the larger, um, water lily pieces, it truly looked like, uh, like an insect. I'll point it out when we, when I see it again. So here you can kind of glue this to the stem itself, or you can put the leaves underneath it and have no stem. Um, so that would be like if you kind of wanted a big water lily and a small water lily. Um, alternatively, if you wanted a medium water lily, I would just leave off the very, the largest layer of the big water lily, and then you would have a medium sized water lily. And I think that would be pretty too. Um, but anywho, I opted to go with the little leaves underneath the bud and still connect the stem at the end. Uh, you'll see that here, just going through and, um, you know, adding, like stacking these up where they go. Um, again, came together super, super easy. Um, no issues lining anything up. This is the one. No, it's the next one. It's the next one that looks, well, that kind of looks a little insect-like as well, but it's the next one that looks kind of like a bug. Um, but that's okay. Uh, it also looks a little like an orchid, you know, but it, maybe it wanted to be an orchid and it's a water lily. But anyway, um, so we did, we did field day and we did the glow cart. And so now my volunteer opportunities, um, have come to an end for this school year because, um, school is out in like two days and then we're on to summer folks. Who's ready? I am. I'm ready for it. It's been very nice weather, um, here lately and we had great weather over the weekend for his party. And yesterday he got to play all day on his actual birthday because we had such good weather. We're still in the pro... There is no we. My husband is still in the process <laughs> of trying to get our pool clear. Um, so he just went to the store again yesterday to get some uh, chemicals to do that because he is a fantastic, awesome dad, husband who wants to get us nice, clean, uh, clear water to be swimming in. But hopefully we'll be doing that soon. Uh, be, we haven't even had the solar cover on yet. And it's, it's already, um, I think in like the, the water's gotten up into the seventies. Ultimately one day we would like to be able to buy a heater for it, but to be quite honest, they're expensive. And, uh, right now we're poor. So there's that between the, uh, the new deck and the vacation that we're hoping to take this year, a pool heater is not in our future though. Our neighbor has one and honestly, it looks very nice. Um, so here, this sentiment set has a bunch of really good ones in it, and you know I like a good sentiment set that has a lot of options for me. Um, so I ended up going with the Rest and Relax, You Deserve It. I thought that that was pretty fitting, right, for this little serene little water lily vibe we got going on with our bubble wrap water. Um, I thought that it was a good one. So, and again, <laughs> and there's a reason why it worked for Honeybee, and it's because I love their stuff. Um, they're... Um, their sentiments, like the dye, the coordinating dyes, uh, are great. They cut right up against it. It's, it's, they're wonderful. So I cut that out, um, of the black cardstock. I did trim down my water background, um, and then mounted it on a white card base. That's what you see me doing here. And then again, you're going to see me kind of like, um, go. I'm going down into the bottom right instead of directly in the center. And I didn't press down the top of the large water lily so that I could tuck this one behind. Um, and then I was kind of like, do I want it here? Do I want it there? No, that looks a weird angle. That's a weird angle. Don't do it. Don't do it, girl. Don't do it. And then so I found a spot for it. And then I'm going to snug in my little sentiment right in between the two where they are meeting have a nice little balanced visual triangle. And then this is, um, 
they have another great gem set that just came out with this release. It's uh called is it called Adventure Awaits? Um, I'm not sure. But anyway, this is the Beebliss one. I, you can see it's well loved by me. And so I chose the kind of iridescent pink ones um, to just uh, accent my little sentiment in there and obviously add some more shimmer. Speaking of shimmer, here's some glim clear glimmer pen that goes on my water lilies. And then that is it. That's the whole card. So I hope that you're inspired to maybe break out of your box and give something a try. I would be very interested to know your opinion. Please go check out the new release. It is really fantastic. Thank you guys so much for joining me, and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.